Hi everyone, uh, this is Alexander from the Indigo Light YouTube channel and blog. I want to welcome you back to another video on this uh, beautiful sunny day here in the Med. Uh, I want to thank you for your presence here. I want to thank you for um, the reception of the last video that was put out. Uh, it's meant a lot. It was an important video. I just wanted to highlight the energetic changes of the period and to be able to help uh, with tangible and uh, pragmatic things that we can do during the daily in order to deal with the things that are happening and improve our lives. Okay, um, so I want to thank you for that, for the journey. I think it's um, admirable to be able to go through this period unscathed. Um, it's quite energetically intense and it's been quite difficult as well. And I really wanted to stress in the last video and today again, that we are a community and we're a family. There is help out there, so there's no need to despair. Um, and this is really the culmination of a journey of self-empowerment. Okay, so I believe that by the end of this journey, by the end of this month at least, and into the month of July, um, a lot of people will have a lot of clarity in regards to the purpose and what, you know, what, what is the next chapter in their journey without the upsets and the upheavals and the energetic imbalances that they've been um, incurring for the last couple of months. Nonetheless, safe to say it's been intense and it will continue to be so until the end of the month. That's why I'm trying to relay um, as much help as I can and as much of the information I receive, I try to put it out as fast as possible um, because I know what I go through on the daily and I see clients as well in their dealings with the energies and, you know, it's quite challenging, let's be honest. Um, that's it in regards to that. Today, I want to address um, a topic that's dear to me. Um, it's a controversial topic and quite an uncomfortable topic for many people. But when I embarked on this journey, I, I took a vow with myself of total transparency and authenticity. Um, so... I want to address this, um, the topic of addiction, in its many forms, not only uh, the ones that we immediately come to think of, and what it has to do with spirituality uh, and the awakening consciousness in general, and um, what it means about us, and the way that we perceive it as well. I'm going to try to keep this video shorter, um, but regardless, I believe this is important to do, and I've gotten requests over the last few months about this um, so I believe it is the right time. Um, in regards to addiction, it's a topic that's close to my heart. It's uh, a journey that I've had to go through uh, multiple times. And um, I've come to understand a lot about myself through this. And I, I speak to a lot of people as well, whether it's by email, sessions, over the years. And I see that it's a theme that's quite common, um, especially in regards to spirituality. So I wanted to explain why in, in this video. Uh, maybe I'll do another video about this. Maybe it needs two videos or three. Um, and I want to also explain, you know, how we should um, look at ourselves in regards to how the world sees us in, in, in a specific topic, in a specific arena. Because uh, I think it's very important. Before I do that, I just want to do a short disclaimer. Um, I've covered this in the last couple of um, videos that I've made. I've released a book. It's called Confessions of an Indigo Child, an in-depth guide to awakening your infinity. Uh, available on Amazon now. Everything's in the description. I don't want to linger on on that. Um, I'm trying to mention it uh, as much as I can in regards to being able to get the message out there. And the, the purpose of this is the parallels that we draw to each other's lives, especially in regards to addiction. Um, it's a confessional. So I've highlighted my journey. A lot of the downfalls and the two near-death experiences that are highlighted there that are, you know, the main catalyst to my awakening are because of addictive behavior and self-destructive behaviors. Um, and it's a theme that I think many people can relate to. Um, so I just wanted to mention that if you need any additional information, it will be in the description or you can send me an email and I'd be happy to oblige. Um, in regards to addiction, there's a very controversial and negative energy attributed to it. Um, it's basically... A total dependence, the way we see it at least, it's a total dependence of a person on a substance or on a behavior in order to be able to, you know, sustain their daily lives. Um, a lot of it, most of it is self-destructive. And I wanted to talk a bit about why today. Um, the addictive behavior, a lot of the times in regards to 
substances, what we call illegal substances, alcohol, all these kinds of things, have um, a self-destructive tone to them. And I want to talk about why in regards to that, because I think it's important. There's a lot of shame and a lot of criticism attributed, and people keep these things to themselves. And society has a way of judging quite quickly, especially when people tell us they've been through this journey. And I don't think that's fair. Not in the sense that, you know, we need to be fair, but in the sense that it's completely misunderstood. Um, a lot of people you'll talk to during spiritual journeys will say that they are empaths or they're attuned or they're intuitive to the energies around. Um, there is a sense of sen certain, pardon me, sensitivity to the environment, what goes on around you um, and how the energies around you affect you. Um, there is an increased sensitivity and ability to pick up on things. Um, and it starts from childhood. It actually probably starts from the, the, the one year fetus within your mother's womb. And of course, other lifetimes, but you know, that doesn't exactly pertain to now. Um, we have been raised in a 3D manner. It hasn't been easy for everyone. Most people that have been spiritually inclined have felt at odds and separate from the society, their parents, their, their school. Um, throughout this journey, a lot of the times, and I can attest to this 100% from my own journey, um, there is the need to self-medicate and escape through the use of these substances, or um, especially from my experience, and, and people have corroborated this with, in regards to, for example, the use of alcohol, um, a lot of indigo children and a lot of people, uh, crystal children, a lot of the younger people have had a lot to deal with in terms of uh, attention, attention deficit um, energies and so on within their bodies, nervous systems that are a bit overactive, adrenal cortex, which is overactive. And a lot of the times it seems like your mind just never stops working. And some of these practices were used to, you know, escape, self-destruct. Um, I'll talk about um, the the causes, the root causes of this that stem back to other lifetimes in a second. Um, but also to numb the mind and to be able to leave this environment. The dense, the third density for a lot of spiritual people has been very dense and heavy and difficult. Um, and people that are more attuned, they feel it. You know, it's like if you go to another planet and the gravity is higher and you walk around, your body feels it, and it's not easy. You know, you can float around, you can jump around, you can feel uh, elated and, and happy. Um, so just see that as that energy within their bodies. And, you know, they try to look around and what, of course, there's, the, you know, the peers and so on, what everybody is doing. But how do I deal with this? That's why so many people also take antidepressants and other medication is to be able to numb and escape from the 3D experience. It's not the, the, the best way to deal with it, but most people have gone through this. It's something that we need to accept. Um, I don't think we should ever go into judgment or anything like that. And um, there should be a shame element removed from it because it doesn't serve anything. In regards to the people that have engaged in these behaviors, myself included, there is the need for total forgiveness and there is no need for the relinquishing of any judgment we have towards ourselves because it wasn't a bad behavior. Okay, it was something that we chose to engage in at that specific time. It seems like a great idea, even though it wasn't, obviously, in retrospect. But it was what was right for us at that time to kind of come to, you know, a downfall, a difficult situation and decide that we had enough and get ourselves out of it. Um, yes, a lot of those substances, you know, especially the more addictive ones, are destructive to your life and, you know, also, on a physical note, you can, you can take you with them, and then it's, it's very difficult to come back from. There's no doubt about that. Um, but in regards to the necessity of people to deal with these energies, and, and this being the easiest and most accessible way, and sometimes, you know, we didn't think so, at so much at that time about how to deal with things, it was an accessible means of escapism and an uh, um, accessible means of dealing with the situation or not dealing, numbing our emotions, numbing ourselves for a while in order not to be in, in this. Because if you're a 4D or someone who's supposed to become 5D born in a hardcore 3D environment, you're going to be at odds with your surroundings from day one. You might have anger or, or difficulties in the house and you're, you're caged within those four walls until you're able to get out of there. And a lot of the times you don't know how to deal with it. 
And when you go out in the world, the, the, the practices of society, the dog-eat-dog -dog attitude, the aggression, the competition, all these things you might not resonate with at all. And then you try to figure out you know, where you fit in this world. And if you don't have um, the tools or the teachers or spirituality around you, not spirituality is a word, but awareness to find what's the reason that you're here on this planet, what are you meant to do, or are you just meant to float around the world, you know, looking around and not belonging, um, sometimes it's easy to go to these things to not be here for a while, okay? Obviously, it's not the right choice. Obviously, in the long term, it doesn't benefit you and it, it harms your body. Nobody can argue that. Um, it's not acceptable, but it's definitely understandable under the circumstances, okay? Um, especially in the numbing effect. I had um, difficulty with this for years from having extreme hyperactivity as, as a teenager and a lot of problems and also the symptoms that have names uh, but science doesn't understand so of course they give you pills and the pills when you take it into your own hands can transform to marijuana addiction later on in life there is this anger that builds up at life and at the world and i had for example an alcohol abuse problem for many many years and substance abuse as well from my end it was stemming from my sheer anger at the world and my inability to, to express that because there was so much of it and to deal with it. So I tried to drink to bury it and make it go away and to numb it. Obviously, it didn't. Um, it didn't matter how much I exercised or how much, I, how much I drank. It was still there. When I started awakening, I was able to sit down and figure where it came from. But in a lot of beings that I've been incarnating for many, many you know lifetimes, um, a lot of people have been separated from the source. A lot of people have made mistakes. I call them lessons. I don't call them mistakes. That they regret. And there has been a lot of self-punishment over these lifetimes, especially in this specific lifetime. The self-punishment can be related to something you did in another lifetime. Self-punishment can be related uh, to um, the need to self-destruct because somehow you... You believe you don't need to be here, you don't deserve to be here, or you're not good enough because all of society isn't like you, or you're not like all of society, therefore there's something wrong with you. Okay, so you need to self-destruct, to disappear, to numb, to escape. All of these things are a lesson we chose to learn in this lifetime. It's not a punishment, it is solely of our doing. There's nobody else to blame, okay? Um, actually, not even ourselves, but we can't project this outwards. And it's all um, kind of a play of the ego, okay? Whenever we go into self-loathing or self-destructive uh, behaviors or anything like that, it always stems back to our uh, ego behavior. And um, the fact that I always say that the ego isn't the bad guy. It's not. Um, but this wasn't to blame on our ego. The ego just came forth in our lives and said, you know what, here is this thing. You know, you can try it or not. You can try to deal with your problems in a different way, or I'll give you an easy fix. Which one do you choose? And of course, you know, when you're a teenager or a bit later in life, in many situations, yeah, let me take the easy fix, because 3D is pummeling on me on a daily basis, and I don't know what to do. Okay, that's why it's important um, to have a community. It's important to have support, and it's important to have love from the people around you. A lot of people that have been uh, awakening by being born in, in, in certain families, myself included, um, never had really the love that we wanted, that we expected. Especially if you're very spiritually inclined, you, I guess, were used to the love of creation a long time ago. And when you look around at humans, especially 3D humans, uh, not that we, we were 3D humans once, okay? I'm not doing an elitism thing. But when you look at your family and you have certain knowledge about how humans could be, and certain values about how they should be, and you look around and you don't find anything like that, there's a lot of frustration and anger. And you feel alone and you're alone and more alone. You try to fit in, it doesn't work because you're not supposed to. Okay, none of us knew about uh, Ascension 20, 30 years ago. Maybe very few. I didn't because I was four years old. Okay, but when I was a kid, I can always remember myself looking around and feeling like I don't belong. Um, Entertaining thoughts of being adopted for being another planet, looking up the skies and talking to something and saying, you know, if you can take me out of here, I'll be very happy. This was at a young age. And I'm sure millions of people have felt the same things. That's why I'm sharing this. Um, 
if you project that onwards, that feeling is still there. You didn't start belonging. But maybe you try so hard to belong that you feel like you're a fraud and you need to punish yourself for it. So whenever something comes up and triggers that addiction, a part of you, you feel like it's the right time to self-destruct or to abuse or punish yourself. On a personal note, I honestly never wanted to be here. I was fighting this incarnation for, from the very beginning, honestly. And only after I had my, my second near-death experience, um, due to alcohol, of course, I had a near-death experience. I almost you know, went to the other realm. I had a clear choice whether I wanted to be here or whether I wanted to you know, continue in that path. And because of that, because I had also always been asking questions, I started to figure out that if I was going to stay for a second round, and this is all covered in the book, that's why I mentioned it, um, I wanted to figure out what on earth I was doing here, and if all of this was just a random experience, or if there's a creative design, and if I have a purpose. And that's why I embarked on all of this journey afterwards, after all of this self-destruction. By finding purpose and meaning, I decided that I actually wanted to be here. Because I realized that all of the things that had happened to me hadn't been somebody else punishing me, but me punishing myself. If I had punished myself, I could also undo the punishment. Okay? And all of this, of course, from the ego. And I could help other people with the lessons that I'd learned. That was meaning. That fueled me. That's why exactly, when, you know, 10, 12 years later, this is what I'm doing. Because this is, uh, this is me. It is a reflection of me. It's my energy. I have learned to embrace it and accept it. But I understand that the 3D mold for many people, young and old, depending on your age, I'm 34, there may be 15-year-olds out there and there may be 65-year-olds out there who have been through these experiences, um, being angry at their surroundings, not wanting to be here, wanting to numb whatever wasn't working. And of course, because there is no, you know, we have high school, we don't have awareness spiritual school instead or in parallel, uh, there's no ad, there's no way to address it. And, and, and many years ago, there was no internet as well. So you were on your own. And this was one of the easiest ways just to not be. But I really think like it's important to, to say that there's a community of people all over the world that are going through the ascension process and they're not alone. A lot of these people from what I'm seeing, not my own journey, but you know, out there, have gone through an addiction period. Um, I wanted to explain a bit in this video why it happens, and it is not an illegitimate or strange or awkward or controversial topic at all. It's a normal human response to being a 5D person born in a 3D world that doesn't give you what you're looking for and always makes you feel like you don't belong. And the anger, resentment, and desire to escape that comes out of that, I feel, is normal. Okay, whatever things we engaged in afterwards, I understand it was destructive to our bodies, destructive sometimes to our minds. Hopefully we're out of it, we've grown out of it, we've learned from it. We must never judge ourselves for it, we must never feel shame about it. It was just a thing that at the time we felt like we needed to do because we didn't have tools, meaning, or purpose. Now that we do, we don't need it. Okay. I feel also in regards to the topic of addiction, as with, and I'll do a video on medicine because I'm a big believer in not alternative medicine, but being aware of your body instead of engaging in all of that stuff. Um, the medical community would provide you with tools to get rid of whatever you have, and it still does. And in regards to addiction, it would help you try to deal with the symptoms. I engaged in addictive behaviors until the point where I felt like I didn't need to do it anymore. That's the only way to get rid of them, is to be able to understand why I did this, to get to the point to understand that I don't need to do this anymore, to relinquish this you know, energy, and to try to replace it with something positive. I.e., I don't want to be here, let me self-destruct. I actually want to be here, let me stop self-destructing. If I was on, you know, all sorts of pills, treatments, and all these things, without addressing the cause, it would just be, um, I feel like there's a lot of people that have had addictive behaviors, that there's still a certain amount of fear that it'll, you know, it'll start again. They start drinking it then, using again, whatever. Um, or even, you know, there are other addictive behaviors like cutting and all sorts of things. You need to take care of the cause. The cause is from here. No pill, treatments, psychiatric uh, a session or anything like that that's mostly 3D will, will really be able to help until you try to figure out 
why change that pattern and embrace a new energy and at the end you won't need it anymore so it will be like not like it never happens but like it really it has a small compartment in your life that you know it's marked with but no more than that okay that's what i wanted to stress uh today in this video i again i said uh before i've been asked to do this a few times um and i thought it was the right time because we're talking about transparency i released a book it has my story in there everything is out um and i feel you know many people are going through this journey or have gone through this journey and there's a certain amount of shame that lingers or difficulty to get out of it and i feel like um, a lot of the times i do videos i try to make things simple tangible explain them as humanly uh, easily as possible and try to go back to the root of the of the of the problem not talk about the symptoms not talk about you know alternatives cures and magical answers because i don't believe in magical answers i don't believe in predictions or pro prophecies or anything like that i believe that we have all the answers within ourselves so i try to go backwards sometimes before we can actually move forwards um that's it i wanted to really thank you for being here um i appreciate you and your journey i want to send out my love to all of you i thank you for being you for doing this journey the as robert frost calls it the road less taken the road less traveled um it's not been easy and i and it's my understanding that we are near the end for many many of us not all of us but many of us depending on what stage we're at and i think it's um it's, I don't want to rejoice yet because I, I want to finish and I want to be able to live free of what I was before and I want us to be able to live free of what we were before. Um, but I think we all need to give ourselves a little clap, a little you know, credit for what we've been through, what we've gotten rid of by taking the road less traveled, which was always going against the grain, incurring all the difficulties, the judgments and the resentment from other people. And... Um, by trying to live by our truth, which is the least easy thing that you can possibly do. Most people still in all their achievements and all their desire to create and to be lived by other people's truths. It takes infinitely more resolve and drive and integrity and authenticity to try to be yourself. Okay, that's a really, you know, I talk to clients from all over the world. They may be on the four corners of the globe. They may not have amazing positions of power or anything 3d but man their journey is amazing and they've done it by themselves against the grain against the currents um because they felt like that's what they needed to do and i think for that we all need to give ourselves and each other credit honestly so i want to thank you for all of you um i mean it i know it's not it's not easy to be on this website it's not easy to be in a society or in a community that you feel judges you or doesn't understand you. And it's not easy to feel like you're alone. And especially if, if you're awakened in the last couple of years, for example, and you find yourself in a, in a relationship with children and so on, and you feel like you need to, you know, close this chapter and find someone new or go out on your own, and, you know, experience life. You're so entrenched in that framework, it's very difficult to get out of it. And it takes a lot of courage. And I think most people can't do it. Most 3D mindsets are not able to make that move. So if you're entertaining this and you feel like you need to follow your truth, give yourself a hand. Seriously, give yourself some credit. Um, you deserve it. Okay. Thank you for you. Thank you for your journey. Um, in regards to the YouTube channel, subscribe if you want to stay uh, in touch. You can send me an email. I'll include everything in the description below. Um, I have also a website, it's uh, www.indigolightlove.com, you can just visit it. I have a lot of posts, uh, written posts that I don't you know, necessarily include. Sometimes I put a monthly message, a channeling or something like that. And of course the book, which is also included in the description. I'll make everything easy and uh, attainable. Okay, um, thank you for you, thank you for being here, I love you all. And um, I wish you good month of june may you be you know well and, and confident and comfortable in this journey increasingly and let um let yourself flow with the current and not against okay because i know the energies are intense so just try to you know 
there is a saying that you should flow like the river, but if the river has boulders in it, you're in the wrong river. Um, so just try to go with the flow. If you feel like there's resistance, try to separate yourself from it and try to figure out why it's there instead of just keeping on resisting and fighting with yourself in the world because it doesn't work. Okay, thank you all. I love you, bless you, and have an amazing day.